If you want to get promoted as an employee and you are a registered dietitian, today's video is created just for you. Are you still making $40,000 a year? Okay, maybe that was an exaggeration. Maybe you're making fifty dollars or $55,000 a year as a dietitian. I know when I was working in clinical, that was the range that they offered me. And in one of my uh, clinical jobs that I stayed the longest, I got paid $55,000 a year. That's it. And uh, I tried to get a raise and I finally worked on getting a raise and, and they said yes towards the end of my time in clinical. And then I left and created my own business. And I want to share with you some of the tips that I was able to employ that took me too long so that you can start making money faster as a registered dietitian, even if you're an employee. First of all, there are tremendous benefits in getting a promotion. You want to get promoted. Promotion gives you an opportunity for more money and possibly an opportunity for more leadership. This can also boost your confidence. And let's not forget that it's always nice to have more income, whether you're paying off student loans or you maybe want to increase your quality of life or start contributing more to your retirement fund. Now, promotion can look a few different ways. One of the most common ways a promotion looks for a dietitian would be a certified diabetes educator a pay raise in general, or a management position. Now, this doesn't look like you taking interns, meaning more work without more pay. Although, let's face it, a lot of us have fallen into that trap. I know I did. I was given interns and more responsibility without being given more pay. So that's not what we're talking about today. The skill any registered dietitian needs to get promoted, get a raise, and make more money as a dietitian would first and foremost include interpersonal skills, which are very underrated in dietetics. That means communication skills, your verbal skills, even your written skills. Think about your ability to speak and to carry yourself confidently so that people take you seriously. When it comes to listening, you want to listen more than you speak as a rule of thumb. Easier said than done, I get it. Now, this isn't just true for counseling and motivational interviewing. This is actually true for engaging with your coworkers and your superiors. There's also the nonverbal communication like your body language and paying attention to your posture and uh, what you're doing with your hands and your body when you're having conversations with people. You wanna practice open body language. Written communication is so important. You wanna practice writing better by writing daily. I don't mean assessments, I mean composing sentences, through emails and having conversations and really working on crafting a well-developed email where people take you seriously. You want to practice empathy. That means compassion for others. And cultural awareness. That goes without saying. Cultural sensitivity is so important. You want to understand preferences and be aware of different practices. One of the ways you can do that includes having resources for patients in different languages, but you also want to be very aware and educated on what that means when, you, when you're talking with your the staff and the interdisciplinary team as well. And most importantly, and one of the most challenging, I would say, when it comes to interpersonal skills includes conflict resolution. So being able to develop the skill to be aware of a conflict and have the ability and the skills to resolve it is absolutely going to make you an asset to any team where you'll be more likely to get promoted than not. If you're interested in learning more about conflict resolution skills, comment below conflict and I'll make another video dedicated to that topic. Another skill, if you want to get promoted, uh, that's often underappreciated in dietetics includes analytical skills. What I mean is objectivity and logic and interpretation, meaning you can collect data and interpret that data like financial analysis. Let's say if you're doing a budget that might happen in a food service position or noticing trends well, that can be related to nutrition assessment and the work that you're doing. If you're in a clinical setting and you're seeing trends because you're analyzing data and you can help make some suggestions or improvements to help meet the bottom line of the facility, that can really make you an asset to the team. This is an example of how you can apply that skill in a clinical setting to ask for a promotion. And let me give you an example of if you did this in the workplace. Using analytical skills means that you're looking at the mission and the vision of the company you work for. You're finding out what their strategic objectives are. What do they want to do? What are they focusing on? Now, every facility has a goal they're working towards. Let's say that they might want to increase visits. This is usually a common goal. And then think about your work as a dietitian and what can you do to help contribute to that bottom line? And if your work can help contribute to that bottom line in some way, that is an opportunity for you to negotiate a promotion. If you're helping the facility reach their goals through your work and you're analyzing what you can do to create and improve those numbers, then you are going to have the upper hand. That's how I did it. 
I saw that there needed to be uh, more patients seen. That was a request, although it wasn't stated out loud. I saw that if I were able to see more patients, that would help meet the hospital's bottom line. And so I was able to facilitate group sessions, which helped me increase my numbers and that helped me get a promotion. So these are things that you can apply as well in a clinical setting or in any other dietitian job setting, using these principles and the skills and customizing them for what the objectives are of your unique facility. If you wanna learn how to tactically take these suggestions and put them into action, I invite you to join the library where you'll have the support of me and my team, as well as my curriculum that I've developed for dietitians at different stages of business. Now, in addition to the robust business curriculum we have, we also offer support when it comes to improving your clinical skills. So I look forward to seeing you inside of the library. The link is listed below. Inside of the library, you have access to over 300 lessons. Additionally, I provide you with a workbook so you can work alongside and complete exercises and get feedback to make progress in your business journey. Now we have different sections, including stages of business to help you understand what to work on next to help you progress with starting and growing your business. We also have uh, guest lectures, uh, live call recordings, and resources such as templates where we've written words for you for social media and email marketing to speed up your process. We hope you look forward to joining and we invite you to come to the library, Dietitian Boss Library, with your peers and our team and me, Libby, to help you grow your business. You might be wondering, is it even worth it to be a dietitian after all this talk and focus on getting a promotion? And the answer is included in this video linked above, so watch that next.